Hi, I'll be talking about biotechnology and its relation to chemical engineering. Simply put, biotechnology is technology based on living organisms or biomolecular processes found in living organisms, such as catalysis by enzymes. This technology is used to make processes from many different fields more efficient, such as in the healthcare, agriculture, and manufacturing industries. Even though the prospect of utilizing cellular processes in industry sounds technologically advanced, biotechnology actually dates back to approximately 5000 BC, where Mesopotamian people managed to convert wine into vinegar using acetobacter bacteria that turns alcohol into ethanoic acid. Since then, we have unknowingly exploited microorganisms for our benefit numerous times, such as nitrogen-fixing bacteria when rotating crops and fermenting beer using unicellular yeast. Despite this long history, modern biotechnology is generally agreed to have started with the discovery of genetics and genetic engineering. The first publicly owned biotechnology company, Genentech, managed to harvest the hormone insulin from the pancreases of animals to produce diabetes medication on a large scale. So how does this relate to chemical engineering? There are several branches of biotechnology, such as medical biotechnology, which uses living cell materials to make drugs, engineer genetics and improve health through vaccines or antibiotics, agricultural biotechnology, which develops genetically modified plants with improved characteristics like being pest resistant, environmental biotechnology, which uses waste consuming bacteria to reduce toxic waste produced from factories, and finally, industrial biotechnology. The branch that most relates to chemical engineering, or its specialization biochemical engineering, is industrial biotechnology. Industrial biotechnology, also called white biotechnology, harnesses biomolecular processes that already exist on a small cellular scale and scales them up to make industrial chemical processes more efficient on a large scale. It uses microorganisms and enzymes to produce goods for industry, including plastics, foods, pharmaceuticals, and energy fuels like biofuels. Biotechnology provides another way for biochemical engineers to scale up reactions to produce products en masse, an alternative to conventional non-microbial approaches. This new pathway also allows biochemical engineers to produce products using more efficient reaction processes with milder reaction conditions. For example, since enzymes used in biocatalysis have moderate optimum temperatures and denature above them, the moderate temperatures of the reaction reduce energy requirements, and operational costs in industry. Despite this, product concentration and formation rates are often very low, meaning the resultant products need to be purified to be collected in marketable quantities. To oversee this, downstream processing engineers are required to extract and purify the biosynthetic product from natural sources through a process of solid liquid separation, extraction of intercellular products, concentration of the product, purification, and formulation to maintain shelf life of the product. Industrial enzymes are enzymes that are commercially used in a variety of industries. Enzymes can both be used as unit operations, meaning they form a basic step in the reaction process, or they can be the final product. Now let's discuss enzymes as a unit operation in which the enzyme catalyzes the main process, a key feature of industrial biotechnology. The enzyme must first be immobilized onto an inert solid material, which provides it with increased resistance to changes in temperature or pH, and also allows it to be easily separated from the products to be reused later on, increasing efficiency. Immobilization can happen through different techniques, such as entrapment to trap enzymes within gels or fibers non-covalently, or adsorption of the enzyme based on chemical and physical phenomena, such as van der Waals forces. After the immobilization, the enzymes are put into the reaction vessel for biocatalysis to occur. In biocatalysis, the enzyme speeds up the conversion of the reactant or substrate to the product. This can be modeled by the induced fit model developed in 1958, where binding the substrate to the enzyme changes the configuration of both so that they fit together, and different molecules with different fits cannot induce a fit with the enzyme. The substrate is distorted to resemble the transition state of the reaction, stabilizing the transition state and accelerating the reaction like any catalyst. Only molecules with the correct functional groups in the correct configurations are able to be induced to fit in the active site of the enzyme. After the biocatalysis, the enzymes are recovered and reused to ensure the overall process remains economically feasible, since enzymes form a large operational cost. 
The current main applications of industrial biotechnology are, number one, producing several chemical ingredients. For example, organic acid, like citric acid, represent the main food additives currently produced at an industrial scale using biotechnology. Sweeteners, such as xylitol and sorbitol, are also biotechnologically produced. Amino acids, which are molecules of importance both for humans and for animals as they are protein chains and have an important role in metabolic processes, are also biotechnologically produced. An example of this is glutamate, commonly used as a flavor enhancer, which is the main amino acid produced commercially. Glutamate is synthesized from carbohydrates using Cornobacterium glutamicum bacteria. Finally, fat-soluble vitamins like vitamin E and water-soluble vitamins like vitamin B12 are also produced through biotechnological means. Number two, producing biofuels. Biofuels are produced from renewable organic substances, representing an important option for medium and long-term replacement of fossil fuels. They help maintain economic and environmental sustainability and can be divided into gaseous, like methane and hydrogen, and liquid, like ethanol, butanol, and diesel biofuels. So gaseous biofuels are the result of anaerobic degradation of organic matter that may be present in agricultural, or urban, and food waste, while liquid biofuels, which have characteristics similar to gasoline and diesel and other fossil fuels, are produced from biomasses. First-generation biofuels are produced from sugars, grains, and seeds, and require a relatively simple process, whereas second-generation biofuels are produced by biological or thermochemical processes using biomass, derived from food or farm waste. And these processes are overseen by biofuel process engineers. Number three, producing biopolymers. Biodegradable biopolymers can be obtained from natural sources like cellulose, or natural monomers that are polymerized by biotechnological polymerization processes. Among the biotechnological polymers, the most widely known and used are biopolyesters, like polylactic acid produced by bacteria or transgenic plants on a large scale overseen by biochemical engineers. The first major biotechnological industrial development occurred in 2009 when the Coca-Cola company marketed composite plastic bottles made of 30% ethylene glycol biomonomers and recycled PET, forming the first biopolymers. A case study example of industrial biotechnology can be seen with the German company Lamy, which produces pens. Lamy had been polishing the nibs of fountain pens with walnut shells and polishing paste. However, the company had to find a solution to a problem that arose where the tiny particles of the walnut shells got jammed into the hollow spaces of the nibs. Initially, the particles were removed manually, which was quite cumbersome. So nowadays, Lamy uses an enzyme cocktail or a mixture or combination of different enzymes, making it more effective and efficient for any catalytic reaction. And this enzyme cocktail made the walnut granules smaller so they can be removed easier. The future prospects of biotechnology are bright. Healthcare biotech is estimated to account for over 20% of marketed medicines through means of drugs and vaccines, and agricultural biotech helps produce improved crops with greater resistance to unfavorable external conditions. Industrial biotechnology plays a key role in the transition to a bio-based economy because the economy is built on goods which biochemical engineers are increasingly using biologically derived, milder conditioned processes to produce. In addition, industrial processes to produce biofuels like biodiesel and bioethanol help to reduce carbon emissions of fossil fuel sources and um, aim to reduce 2.5 billion tons of carbon dioxide per year by 2030, ultimately reducing carbon dioxide emissions by as much as 50%, energy consumption by 20%, and water consumption by 75%. Finally, biotechnology can also lead to a 10% to 50% reduction in capital and operating costs in industry. All in all, biotechnology is an important avenue to be aware of in humanity's journey for a more sustainable future, and chemical engineers are instrumental in making that future happen.